Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation or maybe an exponential equation or a trigonometric exponential equation. Anyways, whatever. You get the idea. We have 4 to the power sine squared x plus 4 to the power cosine squared x equals 3 root 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. Let me tell you something. When I attempted to solve this problem, you know, it's kind of easy to solve. I'll show you how to do that. But I wanted to look at the graph of this function first, or two functions. The trigonometry on the left-hand side and the constant, the horizontal line, right? I got some intersection points, and then I tried to find them on Desmos, and they look so weird. And then I checked the results on Wolfram Alpha. Again, they look weird. And the one thing that I realized actually was kind of funny because I wasn't getting good results. I'm like this equation doesn't have good solutions. And then I realized I forgot to do something, which was picking the radians instead of degrees. So that's really important. So we're going to try to stick with radians because they're different, right? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem after this brief um, mess up that I made. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know why I shared this with you, but I just wanted to. Anyway, so sine squared and cosine squared are related. What is that relationship? The Pythagorean theorem or the trigonometric version, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. And this is true even for complex values of x. Isn't that amazing? I mean, sine x can be two, you can find cosine x from there, which is obviously gonna be non-real, right? Great, so how can we use this information? Good question. It kind of depends on what type of equation you wanna solve. Do you like sine equations or do you like cosine equations? I like sine equations for some reason. Let's go ahead and turn the cosine squared into sine squared. So in other words, isolate cosine squared, you get one minus sine squared. This ide these identities are commonly used, especially with double angle formulas for cosine two X and to get three different versions of the same formula. Great, let's go ahead and do this then. Four to the power sine squared X plus four to the power cosine squared, which can be written as one minus sine squared x equals three root two. I know some people are thinking at this point, case closed, we're done. No, not really. We're not done because the rest is more fun. Now, after the substitution, and if you did make the substitution, take a look at this equation. Do you like it? Well, it doesn't look that, that promising, right? I mean, if you didn't know this identity, that would be really hard. Imagine we had something like four to the power sine x plus four to the power cosine x, or four to the sine x plus four to the power maybe tangent x, right? That would be pretty interesting, don't you think? Maybe in another video we can talk about those, but that wouldn't be that straightforward. Anyways, I talked too much, so I should kind of uh, stop. Anyways, uh, so what am I going to do? Well, this is kind of like subtraction, so let's do this. Split it into division. And this kind of looks weird, you know why? Because of this number. It's like 3 root 2, where does that come from? We'll see in a little bit. So now I do notice obviously I knew that, right? That the same thing appears twice. So this is the coolest part. We can use substitution and call this T or whatever. You can call it S if you want. And now we have T plus four over T equals three root two. Awesome. Let's make a common denominator or just multiply everything by T. T squared plus four T and T cancels out equals three root two t, t squared minus 3 root 2 t plus 4 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. Let's use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Now how do you square 3 root 2? 9 times 2 is 18 minus 4 ac. That's 16. That's going to give us the square root of 2, which is nice. Yeah, another square root of 2, right? That's 2 so we're going to get 3 root 2 plus minus root 2 divided by 2. And this can be written as 3 root 2 plus root 2 divided by 2 or 3 root 2 minus root 2 divided by 2. And that is 4 root 2 divided by 2, which is 2 root 2. And this is root 2 because 2 root 2 divided by 2, 2 cancels out. Make sense? So these are the t values. Nice, right? You like that? And from here, we can find the x values. What is t? We've got a back substitute and t is 4 to the power sine squared x. And if I included the graph, I'd like to show you. So t is equal to 2 root 2, which can be written as 4 to the power 
sine squared x. This is where things kind of get interesting because we're going to delve into exponentials. But 2 root 2 is a power of 2. Obviously, there are some rationals. And 4 to the power sine squared x can also be written as a power of 2. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and write this as follows. Because root 2 is 2 to the power 1 half, and this is just 2 to the power 1, their product is going to be 2 to the power 3 halves. And 4 is 2 squared, so I can kind of write this as 2 to the power 2 sine squared x. Does that make sense? If I skip this step, I apologize. I can kind of show you the intermediate step, and then we multiply these. Make sense? Okay. There's two group of people, or maybe more, but at least I can think of. One group complains when I show my steps. Another group is like, oh, you should show your step. You went over this way too fast. Obviously, you can't please everybody, but, you know, uh, I like to explain things. And sometimes people get bored, but, you know, anyways, <laughs> I'll stop. It doesn't make sense. 2 sine squared x equals 3 halves. And now we're going to divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half, which is even better because you have a fraction. 3 fourths. Awesome. Don't you like that? Because if you square root this, you're going to get a nice value. And the other value is also going to be nice and super duper nice because this, these are special angles, right? Awesome. And by the way, we just looked at one of the values and we're going to get plenty of values from here. And then we, we need to check root 2. Is that going to be nice as well? I hope so. Let's find out. So if sine x is equal to root 3 over 2, let's think about a an angle whose sine is root 3 over 2. Sine 30 is 1 half, sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So it's 60 degrees. But let's express it in radians. I'm going to write it as pi over 3. But remember, first and second quadrant contains two angles that are symmetrical, right? And the other one you can find out by subtracting this from pi. That's going to give you 2 pi over 3. So those are supplementary angles, right? Their signs are equal. Great. Another one, uh, in the negative case, we kind of need to go either to the fourth or the third quadrant. The fourth is probably easier, maybe. I don't know. Or you can do the following. Yes, exactly. I know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, add pi to this. Pi over 3 plus pi is 4 pi over 3. Because if you add pi, you're going to uh, throw that in the third quadrant. And you can add pi to 2 pi over 3. That should give you 5 pi over 3. Right? And that should be... 300 degrees, which is in the fourth quadrant. So we got four values. Of, of course, these are the only values between 0 and 2 pi. If you want to generalize this, like, for example, one of the solutions you can take and just add 2 and pi. I? No, there's no I. That's about, that's complex number. That's the other channel, uh, just confusing myself with A plus pi. Self-promotion, shameless self-promotion. Anyways, so you can do that. And then let's go ahead and look at the other value of t, which is root 2. And root 2 is supposed to equal 4 to the power sine squared x. But this is just, okay, I'm just going to write the 4 to the power sine squared x as 2 to the power 2 sine squared x as before. And this one is 2 to the power 1 half. Awesome. From here, sine squared x becomes 1 fourth. And sine x becomes 1 half or negative 1 half. And again, those will give us good values, right? Think about it. This is sine 30 or pi over 6. The other one is just going to be 5 pi over 6. Add pi, you're going to get 7 pi over 6. Add pi, you're going to get 11 pi over 6. You see how easy that is? Once you find the value, you can negate it, so on and so forth. Awesome. V know the unit circle very well. It's super important. Maybe one day I can make a video on the unit circle because the unit circle is super duper important. Did I make a graph? Yeah, I did. And this is just one of the solutions. Finally, I found out after turning everything into radius. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.